You know, I, I look at the draft sometimes and I go, why are we drafting so many skill position players? Why aren't we drafting left tackles and left guards and right guards and right tackles? Because I can throw Billy Volick back there and be good if I got an awesome offensive line. I get the quarterbacks can change your fortunes, but they can't change your fortunes if they're not healthy. It bothers me that we're looking at football as a star-driven sport sometimes. Because everything is dependent. The quarterback touches the ball more than anybody else, but if there aren't at least five guys that are going to block for him and do a good job of doing it, you get him killed. Which is why I'm worried about Spencer Rattler more than anything else. Because uh, it's my job to pay attention to these things, so I'm listening to Lincoln Riley talk about the offensive line at OU and how they weren't as good as they needed to be last year. Yeah. And he's going to do some mixing and matching on that offensive line. Wait, what? Adrian Ely was starting right tackle. You telling me he might be the starting left tackle? Does that mean that Eric Swintz is not any good? Well, yeah, it probably does because R.J. Proctor started the last four games at left tackle, and he's a guard. I don't know. Maybe it's just where I am right now because we're, we've had this discussion. I've had this discussion with both you, Laurel, and you, Ron, and mm-hmm. that I think I have a realistic view of what college football teams can do. Like, I picked Alabama to win this year's national championship. But maybe I have a pessimistic view of what these teams can do. But, I mean, when you have this pessimistic view, so if you don't believe Alabama's going to win, who who are you falling back on? Clemson? LSU again? Clemson. OU? Not LSU. I was going to say, I thought you picked Clemson to win. Okay. Uh, la- last la- last year. Mm-hmm. Last year I did. Mm-hmm. Is, it, uh, is it the idea that realism is that parody? Like, there's no parody here? Is that is that what people hate hearing? Is that, where, that, is that what you're battling? That, I think there's, I think March is as good a time as any to have hope for your football team. I would agree with that. But. Is no there still hope if you're hoping for the fall of a dynasty? Like I don't care who. I mean, I don't care at, who like at, at this point, like if you if you are if you are a fan of the team, most most likely you're not a fan of Alabama so or Clemson. So yeah, you you would have to you like by definition you had to be for the fall of a dynasty. Hopefully, no, but I'm, that's hopefully somebody that's can my sneak only, in there. Like I would I I would just I like anybody who will beat Alabama. Maybe. Oh yeah, so <laughs> there, there will be there will be no monarchies here. All all heads must fall. Bring out the guillotine for. Your old school big money blue bloods, right? Then you got what you wanted then with LSU winning a national championship last year, right? Mm hmm. Okay. I mean, not exactly what I wanted. Ooh. Okay. What do you want? Well, I'm an Okie. Okay. Uh. I would love to see OU in the championship. I would love to see OU kick Bama's. Can I say ass? On the air? Uh, you just did, but please don't. <laughs> I, uh,. You know, I'm just kind of glad OU got there. Like, it's just nice to see them show up. So that's how I feel. Ooh. I'm just, you know, when they make it to the playoffs, you know, that's gives me those warm feelings. So and that's, that's also, how I feel. I mean, that's that's a good Thanks. discussion to have, right? Because uh, North Texas is never going to play for a national championship in this current college football playoff model. It's just probably, not happen. Probably not. Right. So being happy with how your team performed versus me – who pushes for absolute perfection and dominance, can you be perfect, is also a way of looking at it, right? Because to root for LSU, Alabama, or Oklahoma is to root for a national championship. That said, where the hell is Clemson in this? Because we continue to talk about Clemson as being this Voltron, and they are. But the idea that Clemson even exists in the way that it does ought to inspire more people. Because Clemson is in South Carolina. The, I'm willing to bet most college football players don't even know that. Where's Clemson? Mm-mm. In Clemson. That's where Clemson is. It's in Clemson, South Carolina. What's it, Kentucky? Right. And next, I, next to Louisville? And that, that in and of itself that you could recruit to that place with its nasty high orange and zero tradition. Ain't, ain't, ain't won nothing. And then all of a sudden, over OU's dead body, announces itself. And has been here the whole time. And it's going to continue to be here because they keep recruiting at a very high level. The idea that you look at the recruiting rankings and you see Clemson in the top five for the last you know, three years, 
is ridiculous yeah, because a, that's like seeing Southern Miss. It's a modern miracle that we have a new rivalry and it is Clemson, Alabama. Yeah. Like that's not supposed to happen. Mm-mm. That's why I like it. Yeah, right. So I, I. That's why I'll tune in every time to see <laughs> Clemson, Alabama 13. <laughs> Put it in my veins. So J Bones asks, where is Notre Dame at? Are they even on the radar for the top 10 anymore? Notre Dame is a sleeper to win the college football playoff national championship this year. Let me walk that out. One, they got Clemson on their schedule in November. So you beat Clemson and you're undefeated. We're going to make you number one because you're Notre Dame. You have a built-in advantage because you have that thing that Clemson does not. Tradition. Everybody expects you to be good, domers. And you get to live in this open marriage with the ACC where you only got to play five ACC games and you don't have to play for a conference championship and you get to cherry pick your schedule. But in getting the cherry pick your schedule and having Clemson on it this year, you return Ian Book, who's been the best quarterback that nobody's talked about for some time and was this close to beating Georgia late at Sanford Stadium last year in a game that I actually watched, right? Because I was there to watch it. You also return a bunch of dudes that can play on your defense. I really like Kyle Hamilton at safety. And they lost two games last year. They lost to Georgia and they lost to Michigan. They lost to Michigan because Brian Kelly continued to keep throwing the ball in the rain, which is, I just don't understand. But yeah, we got to talk about Notre Dame like we had to talk about Notre Dame last year. Matter of fact, two things that we said last year was that all roads to the national championship went through Michigan and Notre Dame. Not so, but because of the schedules and because of what we expect those teams to be, we're going to have them in the top 10. And that's really what this turns into. So do we have to talk about Notre Dame as being relevant? Every year we have to talk mm-hmm. about Notre Dame being relevant. On the other hand, the chances that they're going to beat Clemson, nah. But if they beat Clemson, it's going to end up like 2012, where they end up in the national championship game because everybody knows that they're Notre Dame and they beat the hell out of Oklahoma. And then they get ran by Alabama. Mm-hmm. And that's what I don't want. But then again, the same argument is made of Oklahoma every year they make the college football playoff, which, by the way, has been the last three years. Mm. You, you know, I truly love to see Notre Dame get up there with the big dogs. I truly love to see it. Um, so if 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 I was going to make a, a dream Final Four, it would definitely be Alabama, Clemson, OU, and, and Notre Dame. Uh, I know that there's other squads that would like to have a chance, but I really love to see the Golden Domers just Say more about that. Do their Why? do the do their best against Clemson or LSU's or the Alabamas of the world. Because because doing the uh, doing what they need to do, uh, which is show up with a loss, uh, pretty much puts them in it, and uh, show that I I'd, I'd love to see the the uh, people, the haters. <laughs> Uh, people that love Notre Dame say that no, they've they've done. They can play the games on their schedule, so therefore they should show up to. Uh, they should get a shot at the national championship. I'm like I don't think that's. I don't think that's true. I think they might be on the. I think they might be not as good as people say they are. I'm just. I'm just saying. I just. I love to see it. So, I'm looking at Notre Dame's schedule right now for 2020. Mm-hmm. They play Navy to open, and I think that's supposed to be in Dublin, Ireland, but. Under the current climate, we'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Might get moved back here. Then they get Arkansas at Notre Dame Stadium. They ought to beat Arkansas, even as I I really like Arkansas. They're going to beat them. Then they get Western Michigan. Directional Michigan's going to lose. They get Wake Forest, who I thought might have had a shot, but then store brand Cam Newton ended up at Georgia. So that's wash. Then they get Wisconsin, which is going to be interesting because they're going to be without Jonathan Taylor. So they ought to win that. They ought to beat Stanford. They ought to beat Pitt. They ought to beat Duke. There's the Clemson game that it went across. They ought to beat Georgia Tech. They ought to beat Louisville. USC might actually be a pretty good game with them and might end up the way that it ended up the last time that Notre Dame made the college football playoff, which I think is a thing people genuinely forget. Notre Dame made the college football playoff in 2018. That they did. Because they barely got over the top of a 5-7 and seven USC. Barely. But they also had a Jim Thorpe Award finalist playing at corner, and it was the year in which... Brian Kelly made the then unprecedented move of going, you know what, Brandon Wimbush, have a seat. Uh, Ian Book, you're up. And they did okay. Now that team is two years older. So I don't really, I don't really, 
I'm with I'm with you in that they show up with a loss, they're gonna be there. Mm-hmm. 